replacement for Xavier Howard, and they needed a running mate for Jalen Ramsey. Now it's not so easy to just say we won't throw or we won't throw at Ramsey. We'll throw at the other guys because Kendall Fuller is there. So that's the one I'm leaning toward. What What are you thinking so far? All right, Kendall Fuller's a good one. Uh, I'm going to go a different direction but stay in the secondary. I'm going to say Jordan Poyer because, yeah. for one, you got him at such a bargain. His cap hit is under $2 million, and he's a guy that you take from a division rival, the the one you're trying to catch uh, for the AFC East crown. So, and, and now he'll come over with a chip on his shoulder to flip the recent history in the rivalry. It's like a, I had a friend who I could I would play Madden with in high school. Now, I was good at Madden, but he was really good at Madden. So what he would do is he would kick your ass so bad in the first half, build up a huge lead, and then at halftime, he'd switch teams. He'd, he'd say he's trying to mount the comeback with your team that he just put in a huge deficit, and he'd still pull it off. So that's what Poyer is kind of trying to do now in Miami. He's already he's done dominating the Dolphins. He's done that over the past several seasons, his seven years with the Bills, uh, the, the, the recent run. Now he joins them to beat that team that was always sticking it to the franchise in recent memory. Plus, uh, he wants to be here. He provides veteran leadership, and I think he's still got something left in the tank. Uh, Fuller, is uh, he, he's replacing X. Brooks is replacing Baker. Yep. Barrett, uh, you're not getting the 19-and-a-half sack Barrett, and, and, and you right. lost AVG at the same position. So a lot of sort of just one guy in, one guy out uh, transactions there uh, at the same position. Um uh, plus, Barrett will be in the rotation with Chubb and Phillips when all healthy. So, uh, I'm gonna say Poyer. I, I, I like him as as an impact player that you got out of bargain uh, under two million dollar cap hit. Yeah, and you know, um, a column that I wrote yesterday was about the physicality and the aggression and the toughness of these acquisitions. And that's one thing that I really do like. I thought that they lacked that. You know, you're, you're getting beat up front by Buffalo twice in a season. You're getting beaten up front by Baltimore, beaten up front by Kansas City, beaten up front by San Francisco, by Philly. And it's not just up front. It, it's that you don't have a, a big target on third down. You don't have a power running back. Uh, all of those things, to me, go into uh, toughness and aggression and, and the things that the Dolphins lack all over at, at, at the running back position, at the tight end position. I like to see them moving in that direction. I don't think that you're going to solve that problem in one offseason. And, and, and I'll say this also, and you tell me what you think about this, Veronis. Um, I, I, you know, one thing about the, the talent that's coming in it has to be far greater than the talent that you lost. And you have a great tweet on the, on the Dolphins' incoming talent and outgoing talent. And I say that the, the incoming talent has to far surpass the outgoing because the outgoing didn't even get you a playoff victory, right? You're trying to win a Super Bowl. So the incoming or, or you have to use your talent differently. And that's one thing that with a with a, a tight end or a number three receiver, power running back, maybe you 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 move Jalen Ramsey around, right? Some things like that. You use your talent differently. So, do, do, what do you think about the? Does the incoming talent have to far surpass the outgoing? Has it? And do they need to use the talent differently? Well, I'll say it doesn't because what the key is, and I've talked to, about this uh, on the Big O Show, friend of the program who has been yep. on Dolphins Deep Dive as well, yep. um, and, and he's brought it up. I, I kind of agree with him on this, is that it, it's got to be what the talent is at the end of the season because that's when you're going to play that playoff game that ultimately determines whether your season is successful or not. So, uh, yeah, maybe on paper – to start the season, I would call this a slight net loss as far as just the talent mm -hmm. perspective. When you lose your Christian Wilkins and your Rob Hunt and Andrew Van Ginkle, you ha had to release Xavier Howard and Jerome Baker, so on and so forth. But uh, it's a matter of what happens throughout the regular season weeks. Do you stay healthy and do you put the best product you have uh, available to you on the field come playoff time? Because the last two years, the Dolphins weren't able to do that. With all the injuries they had, about half the, the defensive starters this past season, a banged up Tyreek Hill, banged up Jalen Waddle, banged up Raheem Mostert by the end of the season. And then also the year before when you didn't have two available for the playoff game in Buffalo, one that if you have him in, he, I mean, you probably end up winning that game with how close it was uh, without him. So And Skylar Thompson starting in that game. So I, I think it's about what they are at the end of the year and some of the other things you said, uh, how they use their talent better. Mike McDaniel uh, taking another step as a head coach and um, game management. Yeah. Uh, 
Yep. How he manages situations, the short yarded situations, all those type of things play into just maximizing the talent. Even if, let's say, this talent, uh, this roster to start the season is a slight net loss, if we would call it that, um, from an overall talent perspective. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. You're right about that. Uh, here's, I, I will say this also. I like the, the, you know, the the every game counts thing for this team, especially because you're trying to get that home playoff game. And and to me, that's vitally important. So I, I agree with you and Big O. Uh, but I think that, you know, this team, every single game counts so much because who knows with the injury situation, you've got a lot of players with injury history that both are coming back and that you've acquired. And so every game counts so much. But I, I, I see your point there. Um, Verona's the best move of the of the off season and and the best move could be parting with Vic Fangio and bringing in Anthony Weaver right we're talking about how you're going to use Jalen Ramsey the best move could be allowing Christian Wilkins go for that crazy amount of money not paying Rob Hunt a crazy amount of money not paying Xavier Howard a crazy amount of money could be restructuring these contracts uh, it could be bringing in Jordan Poyer. There's a lot of things that could be the best move. So we talked about the best free agent acquisition. The best move for me, I, I guess I'm going to have to say not paying Rob Hunt crazy money because you know my thing with guards. Um, if you listed the players 1 through 22 in order of importance, left guard is 21, right guard is 22. So I, I love Rob Hunt as, as a person and as a player. You can't pay him crazy money. And when I was saying it gets down to Connor Williams or Rob Hunt, I was saying I would pay Connor Williams because his position is more important. He might not be a better player, but his, his position is more important. So to me, the best move is you, you had it's tough, but you had to say goodbye to Rob Hunt. I can't pay a guard crazy money, especially with the other things that are coming down the pike for me. Wow, talking all brave now that Rob Hunt is gone. <laughs> hey, you don't value him. Okay, I, I see you. <laughs> no, uh, well, I, I say Anthony Weaver coming in as defensive coordinator. I like that one because I think he will amplify your biggest move from last offseason, which was acquiring Jalen Ramsey. So I believe he'll maximize what the Dolphins have in one of the most elite cornerbacks in the game. And his quote in his introductory press conference was telling, an ultimate chess piece. He views Ramsey as the queen on the chessboard. He's going to move him around, shadow an opponent's top receiver when the time is right, which is something Vic Fangio refu refused to do most times outside of that one Jets game against G Garrett Wilson, which resulted in a shutout. So as far as X's money getting freed up, the, and that that's one. Let's see what comes after June to determine if that one takes the cake. But uh, it was also smart not to pay Wilkins and Hunt in the grand scheme because when you look at what they got, um, you know, no franchise – is going to be successful paying that much amount to one player uh, at their positions. I mean, they're great players at their positions, but uh, that that's like the Patriots went 20 years. Uh, they weren't overpaying guys uh, to keep that dynasty rolling all those years. They were always, they always had guys that were leaving in free agency and then uh, rebuilt through the draft and coached up the next wave that was coming in. So, Although it really hurts to lose uh, guys like Wilkins and Hunt, then, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, you, you couldn't operate paying uh, those guys all that. Yeah. Um, welcome to uh, Cat for Life for uh, tuning in here. Welcome to Clark Hartman. Um, here's a question from Peter McDowell, um, Ferronis. He, he, or not a, not a question, a statement. He says, a lot of captains signed, too, on the defensive side of the ball. Great leadership. I think you had a tweet to that extent, didn't you? All the C's <laughs> on the shirts. Does that make a difference? Because I remember a former Dolphins team, um, I, I want to say maybe in the 12 or 13 or 14 draft, and they got a lot of team captains, and they thought that was going to make a difference. Turned out it really didn't. I, I know where you're going with this, Peter. Ferronis, do you think that that's going to make a difference? When, you know, the, the Dolphins have a low knucklehead factor, um, although Tyreek is trying to change that. Uh, so they, they've gotten good people. Does that make a difference? Does it make a difference when in style of play, blah, blah, blah? Does this does the C on the chest make a difference? 
Yeah, I think it does. And then, uh, but also, uh, everyone kind of needs to know their place when they're coming into a new team too. So it's not like you can just expect every uh, former captain at, 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 on another team to then come in and, and expect to be that same guy. So as long as it's not like a clash of of all these different captains and and the way they lead, uh, and everyone sort of understands who the leaders are on this team, who has already been here, and you you don't have the clashing of those voices, then uh, th- then it works. Yeah, yeah. Clark Hartman says he remembers that. Yeah, uh, I'd have to go back and see which draft that was. Uh, Cap for Life, uh, Feronis, uh sends us this. Uh, showing reflected on the books yet. So uh, when we're seeing the uh, the sites that have all the salary cap numbers, uh, the over the cap, the uh, spot rack or spot track. Uh, sites and then they still haven't uh, inserted some of those free agents. So some of that money is going to go into that. Some of that, hey, if Odell Beckham walks out with a deal in place, agreeing the terms, and then that's going to go into that. Uh, so uh, maybe maybe that's as as big of a splash as you'll see. Uh, the Dolphins are definitely operating with a a prudent approach of uh, not spending too much, not overpaying for anyone especially because they have so many cap commitments and then you've got the dead cap coming in years to come. So uh, you need to pay Tua, which is really going to come into play after uh, 2024. So uh, yeah, all these things need to be taken into consideration as far as uh, also the long-term vision. Yeah. Uh, cap for life. I'm going for it. I-, I am going for it. I'm telling you this, that uh, this is to me, it's a, it's a year to year thing with this Dolphins team. I'm trying to win a Super Bowl, And I know that, Things are creeping up on me. Look, Chubb just had his second career ACL surgery. You don't know what Jalen Phillips is going to look like and how he's going to be two or three years from now if you extend him. There are, there are things down the line, you know, Tua and his salary. Is Tua even going to stay healthy this year? There are so many questions, so many factors that, I, I to me, the, this team is in a place now where you've decided to go for it and you, you, can't, you can't pull back. And so... I know you have to be financially prudent, and and a shout out to Brandon Shore. The 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 financial gymnastics that that man has done has, has been absolutely incredible. That's it. It's at Andy Ellisberg level of the Miami Heat. Like the, the dude yes. is a baller. Brandon Shore is a baller. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm going for it right now. That's that that's my deal. Um, I'm not I'm not waiting. I'm trying to win that Super Bowl right now. So that that's that's how I feel for it about it. Cat for life. Uh, Ronis, let's move on to segment two. Which position has best upgraded and most significantly downgraded so far? Um, let's go with the upgrades first. I mean, at safety, you mentioned Jordan Poyer, right? He comes in there and he's replacing Deshaun Elliott. That's a definite upgrade. Inside linebacker, you get Jordan Brooks in there instead of um, instead of uh, Jerome Baker. Center, we'll see if Brewer takes over for Connor Williams, what they do uh, at, at cornerback, Kendall Fuller for Xavier Howard. That's not, you know, you could say it's an upgrade, system upgrade, uh, you know, overall, but a straight out swap, I don't know. Uh, the cornerback position is is okay, though. I, I would like to see him bring Eli Apple back. Tight end upgrade with Janu Smith, and, and you've got Jody Fortson. Um, I, I'm going to go first. I'm going to say that safety is the one, is the position because of the tandem. I went with Fuller as the best free agent acquisition. I'm going to go with the position upgrade of safety. That tandem of Javon Holland and Jordan Poyer has a lot of potential right there. You can crack some skulls. You can do a lot of things with that position uh, now that you've got him back there. So I, I'm going to say safety, and we'll see what happens at center because you, you've, kind of, you've upgraded that position, haven't you, when you got Brewer? And if, if uh, Connor Williams comes back and you do still have Liam Eichenberg, so you would really be three deep at center – that might be the best position of deepest position of the team if if uh, Connor Williams comes back. But I'm going to go with safety because the starters, the two starters, are so strong. Yeah, yeah. Now the thing, yeah, Connor Williams was very good at center when he was in there past couple of years in a transition from guard. So outside of some snapping issues here and there, uh, so so you were already very solid at center beforehand. Right. So I'm not sure how much you're you're upgrading there now. Uh, Aaron Brewer, uh, I, I think he'll be a great fit. As well, and we don't know if he'll play center or guard. When we spoke to him over Zoom, then he said that's still to be determined. So I think the whole offseason has to play out, maybe depending on what the Dolphins do in the draft or the Connor Williams situation and whether the, which one they want to play at center or guard because 
both Williams and Brewer do have experience at each of those positions and present versatility. Yeah, I, I like safety, uh, just similar to the answer I had in the previous segment. Uh, Jordan Poyer coming in, that's going to be a feared tandem. Inside linebacker, it, it's going to be, we're going to be comparing uh, Jerome Baker and Jordan Brooks. They're, they're two seasons because now they swap teams. There was an essential trade. You got a little bit younger with Brooks coming in instead of Baker, so uh, maybe also gives you some longevity at the position with uh, the guy you're bringing in. But but we'll be comparing their two seasons um, across the country, literally all the way across the country, and some of the Dolphins will be playing next year too in Seattle. So uh, we'll get to see how that plays out. Cornerback, uh, yeah, it's interesting, Perk, because you you had um, you said the Dolphins should bring back Xavier Howard before they released him. You were writing that column. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I, I think they should have, but they didn't. They didn't. But I, I, I don't like the decision to let an X go, but you did get Kendall Fuller, um, and so the position has done pretty well. Matter of fact, I'm getting some pushback. You, 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 I'm getting some pushback on my Eli Apple comment. Uh, oh, I Red knew Dyer that would 12. happen. That was the other yeah. thing I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> the Grandizer 12 says, did I hear that right? Eli Apple? Horse Apple? Nah. Get a rookie there. Now be crazy. Bring Apple back. Are you crazy? Clark Hartman, he was kidding. Uh, I wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding. I, look, Eli Apple was okay. He was okay. He was okay. What, uh, go ahead, Peronis. Rip the guy. It's trash. Kirk, you really are a funny guy. That's a great joke. You're really, you're really committed to it and all. Man. You're really sticking to it. No. no. All right. It, it's a big deal with fans. Now, Eli Apple, it is. It is. The, the stats, the metrics say he was not as bad as ever, as all fans want to say he is. Right. But but I know it's a huge deal amongst the fans that, that they are, are really um, upset with, uh, with any time Eli Apple was out there. I think in part because... Uh, Cam Smith wasn't playing, so Vic Fangio loved to put Eli Apple in every opportunity he had, and then and Cam Smith uh, wasn't getting those reps whenever um, uh, some cornerback opportunities arose. So I, I think that was part of it. But really, I mean, Eli Apple was giving up a lot of underneath stuff, maybe missing a tackle like you saw a couple times against Devontae Parker and the Patriots. So that's right. kind of where it all started, where the fans are were really on Eli Apple. And I think Apple has just been a target of a lot of – uh, social media vitriol, yes. like going back some time to when he was with the Bengals and uh, and just previously in his career. So he's always been sort of like this target of of, of a lot of attacks. Right, right. <laughs> All right, man, I'll be crazy. Thanks. He says, you're still my dude, Perk. Love the show. Uh, yeah, they're, they're on me, Peronis. They're on me. They're on me. <laughs> Let's see how I have Eli was. I mean, he he provided depth, but I'm not. I'm not going to win that argument. So I'm. I'm. Let me. Let me just vacate that one. But I, you know, I, I liked. I, I liked Eli. Um, not as a starter, but just for depth. Uh, downgraded positions that that have gotten weaker. Uh, guard. You know, when when I said you got to let Rob Hunt go, but that position is definitely weaker, right? Uh, defensive tackle. You don't have anybody to replace uh, Christian Wilkins. And here's the other thing with defensive tackle that we can talk about, Ferronas. Zach Sealer, he was good when he had Christian Wilkins behind him and 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 uh, Jalen Phillips on one edge and Bradley Chubb on the other. With with all three of those guys possibly not there for the opener, what's Zach Sealer going to look like? How effective is he going to be? So that defensive tackle position might have downgraded edge rusher. Uh, you know, if if Phillips and Chubb aren't there. Or, or aren't open or 100%, that's downgraded. Cornerback, you know, Xavier Howard, you could say that, that that loss, that's a downgrade. Wide receiver, River Craycraft is coming back, but you, you did lose Sid Wilson. Uh, you needed a number three receiver. Braxton Berrios is back in the slot, but because you are basically standing still, is that position a downgrade? Um, you go first this time, or, or it could be a different position. What, what what do you think has downgraded so far? No, I think definitely it's defensive tackle is where it really hurts. Uh, you no longer have Wilkins and Sealer in tandem. Sealer will have to step up and, and, and do it on his own, and he might see more double teams inside now uh, because of that. So um, at least it's a lot of bodies up front. So while they won't be rolling out their top duo for 90-plus percent of defensive snaps, they have a, a lot of uh, defensive tackles that will be rotating and kept fresh and hopefully coached up well by Anthony Weaver, uh, who has a defensive line background, played 
defensive line himself, defensive line coach with the Baltimore Ravens, and also Austin Clark, who has done a great job here, obviously, uh, the development of Wilkins and Sealer themselves. And uh, so I think that's a good t- coaching tandem up front and uh, rotating bodies instead of uh, having Wilkins and, and Sealer, which were really, it's really unheard of outside of the Dolphins last couple seasons of playing your two defensive tackles that many snaps. Um, so it's going to be a different approach now. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with uh, and defensive tacklers. You you bring up some very good points there. Uh I'm going to go with edge rusher. And because you've got two question marks there and two guys who are so effective and who you relied on so much. Uh there look, there's an outside chance that either Jalen Phillips or Bradley Chubb is 100% effective uh healthy for the opener. But I think realistically, you have to think one of them won't be, even if they're both out there on the field. I, I'm talking about 100 percent, you know, like they're going to be in November, hopefully. Uh, you know, it takes time to come back. And, and, and you know, they, they have lower body injuries, right? A knee and an Achilles. And at that position, you're pushing off so much. You're changing direction so much. I don't know how long it's going to take them to get to 100 percent. Shaq Barrett. Um, you know, you lost AVG and Van Ginkle. That's a big loss as the b- replacement. Shaq Barrett, he's got two double digit sack seasons and the other seasons he's averaged like 3.8 sacks per season. So that edge, you know, if, 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 if Kendall Fuller is not everything you expect and you can't lock down the edges, the corners, and, and you've got no pass rush, it, it's going to be some long days for that defense. So the edge, you've got to get pressure on the quarterback somehow. That's what I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For honest, when we look at wide receiver, and, you know, uh, that position has not really upgraded yet. Um, you know, we, we've got a little conversation on here. I like this one from Raphael Courtright. Um, Dolphins only want OBJ due to his girlfriend, Kim Kardashian, like Kelsey and Swift. Um, you know, that's, uh, he's being funny, but I kind of like that. Uh, Clark Hartman was Reggie Bush dating Kim when he played here. They were a little bit, uh, I was here at that time and I remember asking Reggie when they went up to DC, are you going to see Kim? And he gave me a response and I tweeted it out and I got like a hundred followers immediately from all these, uh, dating these, uh, you know, people magazine and all that. They thought I was going to update them. And like uh, two weeks later, they all fell off. Like this dude is a joke. He's not a, he's not an entertainment reporter. I was like, yeah, you're right. Why is he tweeting about a 2012 Dolphins Bills game now? <laughs> Get back on the Kim KB. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, but on, on the receiver, Grandizer 12 says they still got Chase Claypool on the roster too. That's why who knows how that will play out. The receiver position, I would I would sign OBJ. Uh, has that position downgraded? Is it, it, has it been I, I guess subtraction by inaction, pretty much? Yeah, yeah, um, right. I mean, it, you needed that number three guy. Uh, you want an upgrade from Cedric Wilson. He's already uh, moved on to the Saints. So you, you brought back some of the other guys, Braxton Berrios now, River Craycraft. Uh, so Odell Beckham would, would certainly be an upgrade. Um, now, th- I mean, there's other options. Could you bring in a Michael Thomas? Obviously, an uh, e- even deeper injury history uh, than o- Odell. Maybe he hasn't bounced back as well as o- OBJ did uh, just last season in Baltimore, uh, including a big touchdown catch against the Dolphins, uh, that uh, New Year's Eve game, uh, Week 17. So... Um, you have seen Odell Beckham Jr. do it uh, just very recently, too. So that's one thing. I know uh, Jarvis Landry is also a name that's been floated yeah. around yeah. on uh, on social media. Uh, you can speak on that if you want. Uh, Hunter Renfro is another one slot receiver. So floor is Yeah, you, you know, Jarvis, Jarvis is a guy that, you know, that you talk about tough. Now, he's somebody like his buddy OBJ. He's not the same player that he that, that he used to be. He's had injuries and, and just age has, has slowed Jarvis down. We know what Jarvis was. He could come in here and, you know, he, he would have to accept a, a, a lower role. Could, you know what? Could Jarvis beat out Braxton Berrios in the slot? I don't know. And so at that point, if it's really that close, it's – it's kind of a parallel move. OBJ, I think, would be an upgrade. Jarvis, I'm not. I'm not sure what Jarvis has left. So, I, I like Jarvis's toughness, and I like what Jarvis used to be. But um, I'm, I'm not sure what Jarvis is anymore. Uh, by the way, well, what's up to Pretty Boy? Good to see you back. Good to see you back. He said he took some time off from the chat, but it's good to see you back in here. All right, it is time for the feature that is growing by the minute. It is. 
The Faronis bonus. Oh, the Faronis bonus. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> I love it, baby. I love it. All right, this week we've got a we've got kind of a, a, a interesting big picture thing, a philosophical question for you here, Faronis. Uh, oh. All right, and, and this is one. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Yeah, yeah. It's just, get, get all philosophical on me. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. A little education here. Uh, so, Faronis, the Dolphins are, are still kicking that financial can down the road, right? We know everything that's coming to his contract extension, Jalen Waddell, uh, Jalen Phillips, uh, everything that's coming. So, so the question is, is this a win-now Super Bowl title year for the Dolphins, or can they somehow continue kicking that financial can down the road? We talked about Brandon Shore and what he's been doing in the organization. He's the numbers guy for the Dolphins. What do you think? What time is it for the Dolphins? Perk, it does feel like this quickly becomes a now or never proposition for this Dolphins team. Tyreek Hill is 30. Jalen Ramsey is 29. They're at their best right now, but how much longer will they play at that level? Obviously, they're still going to be good for a while. Uh, Teron Armstead may retire next year. If he's so close to calling it a career this year, I mean, he, he, this might be his, his last season very well. You basically punt it on the past two draft classes outside of Devon A. Chan, so you don't have that young talent rising into their prime for the next few years. The only ones you're really talking about are the top three guys from the 21 draft class, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Phillips and Javon Holland. So you've got some decisions to make long term on them coming up. So you got to lock them up. The free agency class is filled with a lot of veterans that can help this year, but aren't necessarily going to be long term solutions. Uh, plus, it only gets tougher to maneuver financially in coming years as you pay Tua his big money. You already saw some of the cap ramifications of this offseason with all the guys the Dolphins lost in free agency. Many of them, their own successful draft picks that are, are now gone and moving on to other franchises. A lot of these contracts they're on the hook for now have void years, so it's uh, down the road. So it may have to be a reset in earnest in coming years while this is sort of like a soft reset while still pushing all in in a way. Uh, so you just wonder if they – won't be quite good enough now and maybe won't be able to build such a talented roster in the future, then 2023 was a bit now or never, and now 2024 really feels that way. Yeah, and, and you know what? Uh, I, I agree with you, Faronis, that, again, everything with me is going to be do it now, win now. Get these guys in-house and, and, and make that all-out push because – you don't know what the future holds with this team. Now, look, I do think that you can kick the can down the road financially and keep doing it. But as you say, there, there's so many tough decisions. There's so many injuries. There's so many unknowns that it, it's tough to, to me, it's tough to keep a plan together for longer than three years. Like you, you go in as a GM or as a coach or, or whatever, this is our three year plan. And if it doesn't work after three years, you kind of have to start over because of injuries, because of age, because of free agency, because of the salary cap. We're at year three in, 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 the, in the Mike McDaniel era, right? And, and so I'm not saying it wouldn't work in year four, that it wouldn't work in year five. You're set up for this thing to have worked last year or this year. And so I do think that this is a win now situation for this Dolphins team. Now, uh, I, I'll say this also that um, you you can pivot and, you know, if it doesn't work this year, you can decide, well, we're going to do X, Y, and Z, but you can't do X, Y, and Z by 2025. Now you're looking right at 2026, 2027. You're on a different three-year plan to me. So, uh, yeah, I, I say you do it now, whatever money you have, you've got to be prudent and, and smart, but really whatever you have, I'm, I'm pushing it to the center of the table. We're betting on the Dolphins this year. Yeah, put yourself in the best position to win this year. And you, you worry about next year next year without putting yourself in the worst of position uh, in, in future seasons. But you already know it's going to get a lot tougher in future seasons. So it's going to be – once Tua gets his big contract, it's going to be a lot on him without maybe – you know Tyreek Hill's going to get older. Jalen Waddle, yeah, you want to lock him up. But then maybe you won't have – uh, all the, the parts on defense. Uh, you, you might not be able to afford uh, all your old line and you're already losing one this year in Rob Hunt. So uh, a lot of other parts, they, they may lessen in the process, but um, then Tua will have to uh, uh, pull it without maybe as talented of a roster around him. 
Uh, welcome to uh, Michael Crosby, who says, uh, what's going on with Odell Beckham? That's all I want to know. He's in for a visit today. Kardashian's boyfriend is in for a visit today. We'll see what happens. Uh, you, you log on late. That's what you missed. That's what we started the show with. You, you, that's you it. That's it. Time? That's it, baby. Well, well, he can catch the podcast and get caught yeah, up. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Download <laughs> the podcast. Uh, Evan Langley says we're on the 33 year plan. But that's, he's, he's, yeah, it's a joke, but how long has it been since they won a playoff game? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> gee, that, I mean that, that's, that's my 20, age. Twenty-four. It's been my whole life. They've been on this plan. <laughs> yeah, he's close to right. He or she, I guess. I guess it's a he with with a name like Evan. Hey, um, let's do a Feronis bonus bonus here. Oh, oh, yes. Feronis bonus. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing the whole thing again, but <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right. So here's the Feronis bonus bonus. Uh, we're both going to be at the owners' meetings in Orlando uh, early next week. Um, we're gonna get to talk to Chris to uh, to to Matt, Mike McDaniel. Let me get that straight. Mike McDaniel probably, hopefully, get to talk to Chris Greer. But when you talk to Mike McDaniel, Ferronis, we us. can ask we we can ask him about a lot of things. Uh, we can ask him about getting a number three receiver. We can ask him about Tyreek Hill and his off field stuff. Right. We can ask him about um, you know extending Tua. What, what do you want to ask him about most? And, and I'll go first here. I, I've got to say, it, some of Tyreek's stuff is, it, it's got to be high on my list because look, um, we don't, we know that Tyreek has already talked to the commissioner, right? Um, and, you know, with, with this other stuff that's going on, I, I don't, there, he might get summoned to the commissioner's office again or to a Zoom call with the commissioner. And if he does, you, you've got to wonder how far off a suspension could be one game or so. I'm not talking about four games or anything like that, but you know, so, so with Mike McDaniel, one thing that I'll probably ask him is, have you guys pulled Tyreek aside or are you still kind of letting him go off on his own? What, 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 what do you think you might want to ask Mike McDaniel or, or two or three things maybe? Well, great job. You just tipped him off on that question. <laughs> now, now, now there's no chance that he's going <laughs> to give you a, he's going to be prepared for this answer already. <laughs> well, I imagine he's expecting it regardless. And uh, Chris Greer also got that question at, uh, at the combine as well. So uh, I imagine it'll be something along the same lines, but, um, but yeah, you, you can find your, your own way to, to um, sort of uh, move it forward. And there's new stuff that has come out since we spoke to Chris Greer at the combine. So it's just, it speaks to just how constant it is. It right. is with a new developments as far as Tyreek Hill off the field. So it's definitely um, a topic that's going to follow this team. Uh, yeah, owners meetings is always a, a lot of uh, you recap the offseason moves that have been happening so far. So Because we haven't heard from Mike McDaniel on all these free agency moves. Right. So uh, his thoughts on a lot of those things and. Maybe some of the uh, maybe the offensive line alignment, like Aaron Brewer, uh, wasn't sure if if what well, he'd be a center or guard, and that's still to be determined. And uh, maybe we get a more clear answer from Mike McDaniel. Uh, the year they got Teron Armstead, then um, he solidified that. Uh, he would have him at left tackle, not move him off, even though Tua was a left-handed quarterback. So th there was still sort of like a question of, oh, do you move Teron Armstead to right tackle to protect Tua's blind side? Um, and then, and now you've had Austin Jackson really uh, uh, pull himself up and, and rise to the occasion on that side. So that's formed a, a nice tandem. So. Yeah, you always got sort of look forward a little bit, too. So uh, getting his thoughts on Tyreek Hill and um, what might be to come uh, for the Dolphins this offseason, uh, a look into the draft, uh, probably uh, another update on the Tua contract talks. And then also, uh, I'd like to know from Mike McDaniel himself how he is, uh, he how he plans to improve uh, as a coach himself going into year three for himself, uh, because he he'll have to maximize what this offense can do. Uh, obviously, number one offense in in yards and and all that, but now getting it to another level where it's consistent against the top defenses and down the line into against the the, the playoff type atmosphere games to be able to to uh, maneuver in cold weather. Uh, at the end of the year, all those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, that You know what? You bring up something else that I do want to ask him about is the play calling, and yeah, has he I made know. a decision on that? Uh, by the way, um, you know, I told you guys that we're going to have the uh, online Q&A article tomorrow. 
Cat for Life, Grandizer 12, Michael Crosby, Troy, welcome Troy, and Dave Harbour. I've got your questions queued up to answer tomorrow in our uh, online article. Uh, keep sending in the questions. We'll answer them here. I'll answer a few more of them online tomorrow. Um, Faronis, <clears throat> let us move to our final segment here. And it's, it's a segment that kind of looks ahead. And, and it's how do the Dolphins finish so that it's a successful offseason? I think it's been a good offseason so far. I do think that the, the losses have, have kind of outweighed the gains. But again, if you change your style of play or kind of tweak how you use the talent, I, I think you can do OK there. So I, I'm OK with the offseason overall. I'd have kept X, but I'm OK with the offseason overall. How do they finish it? so that it's a successful offseason. And I'll give you a bunch of examples. We can go a lot of ways here. Do they, do they finish it successfully by drafting an O-lineman and an edge rusher in the first two rounds and not extending Tua? Is it successful by simply extending Tua? Is it successful by simply trading out of the first round? Is it successful by planning for the future at left tackle? Is it successful by chilling on the big moves this offseason to preserve those comp picks that you might get, compensatory picks, next year, and you kind of rebuild and build toward next year. There's a lot of possibilities here when you talk about finishing this so that it's a successful offseason. I kind of like the drafting two, the, 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 the offensive lineman and the edge rusher in the first two rounds and not extending Tua. Having said that, Tua is going to get extended. Yeah, right? yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, so I, wrong. so I, you're wrong. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. so He's getting I'm extended. Already, so, I, I'm, so I'm just going to limit it then to drafting an offensive lineman and an edge rusher in the first two rounds. I don't care the order. Your offensive lineman could be the, you know, from Oregon, the guard center, Jackson Powers Johnson. It could be Oklahoma's left tackle, Tyler Guyton. Your edge rusher could be UCLA's, uh, light, I, I butchered this guy's name, like Atu Latu. So that that's a few names, but that that's kind of I think to finish the off season strong. That I think that's probably what I would most like to see at this point. Yeah, I put out a tweet uh, not long ago where uh, I set a uh, a weight um, minimum, a weight a quota. No, not quota. Quota is a max. Uh, just a minimum that I want to see from the Dolphins' first two picks. So uh, to get to acquire 550 pounds in the, the first two rounds of the draft. Or if you end up trading down, at, you can go for 750 in three rounds, meaning you could also get a wide receiver uh, that, that's not as heavy uh, if, if you're also trading down and then you, you end up with an extra pick in the first three rounds. So uh, 550 can get you a 300-pound offensive lineman or defensive lineman that's over 300 and maybe a, a, an edge rusher. So uh, I, I think just as, just look into the trenches is my greater point here. So if it's off offensive lineman, if it's a Jackson Powers Johnson uh, out of Oregon or Graham Barton uh, out of Duke, I, I, I'd like those guys on the Dolphins. And even better if you're able to get someone uh, while trading down. Or if it's like the Texas defensive tackle Byron Murphy, um, who may, might be a stretch to be able to land. Now, uh, you also maybe look at tight end, and if Brock Bowers starts to drop in the draft, would you trade up to a certain spot? Yeah. Like, I don't think he's going past number 15 to the Colts. So do you sort of target that? Now, that'll also cost you some picks. And the Dolphins have been pretty intentional about uh, stacking up those 25 uh, compensatory picks. They're in line to get three or uh, two, uh, two third rounders and and probably another a third one in, in the later portions of the next draft. So you want to preserve those as much as possible, but you might have to trade your second uh, along with that first, and that ends up being your a uh, whole first two nights of the draft if you have to trade up. Um, but trading down could also get you a pick. So, you know, if it's an edge rusher, that'd be great. You mentioned Latu, then uh, it might be tough to see him uh, lasting to a Dolphins pick. But it, uh, yeah. second round sort of opens up on how many guys you can get. Maybe they're looking into the tight end uh, beyond Bowers. They were just at Texas, so there's Jatavian Sanders right there. Texas has a couple of uh, receivers and Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the Dolphins were in there in full force at at Austin at their pro day just uh, yesterday. So, obviously, there is a lot of interest. And, and there's just so many guys, too, in the middle rounds of the draft right. that I'd like to see the Dolphins uh, pick up. But it's just you don't know, know it's not really realistic if they don't have a third rounder or a fourth rounder, which right. sort of tells me, boy, it'd be nice if you trade down, you still get like a Graham Barton out of Duke or 
JPJ from Oregon, but then you also are able to like add left tackle, like a Patrick Paul out of Houston. Right. So, you know, somewhere in that range. So you have, maybe he can learn behind Toronto Armstead. And then also he's your guy down the road, assuming he's, he's developing. Right. So, or, and can also fill in if Armstead is missing games. So, um, I know a, a lot of, uh, uh, different ways, different routes that, that this could go. Um, and, and we'll have a lot more clarity once you see what they do in that first round that Thursday night. But um, it just it'll be really interesting to, to see what develops. It is. It is it, because, yeah, they could go a bunch of different ways. And speaking of that, Carl Wimmer asked, help me out. Why edge rusher and not a big, mean, ugly nose tackle or interior guy? Yeah, Tavondre Sweat from uh, from Texas. Yes. Also. Oh, that look, that dude is a he's a grown man. I saw him at the Senior Bowl. He is a grown man. But I say edge rusher because of influence on the game. Because the edge rusher is such a important position. You guys know it's a it's a passing league. Get pressure on that quarterback and and make the Ramsey Fuller combo back in the back even more effective. You put pressure on them from the front with that pass rush and in the back with that lockdown defense, and, and then you're really onto something. So that's why I say edge rusher and not the nose tackle or interior guy. Speaking of that, uh, Tim Trini says, what about Calais Campbell, which I think is very intriguing because you, you're not looking for, you know, uh, 40 snaps a game from this guy. He could be a Raekwon Davis type uh, type situation. So uh, that could be something. Billy Batson says, trade 21 back, please. So what what would you think about Calais Campbell or, or trading back? Yeah, trading back. Yeah, yeah. As I said, uh, that'd be nice, especially if one of your targets, uh, and even if it's just trading down within the first round, you could pick up a third. Let's say, um, then then that'd be good. Maybe you even get some twenty twenty four or twenty five extra capital right. out of that. Calais Campbell. Hey, uh, I'm a Miami Hurricane myself, so I'd love to see him. Uh, maybe whether it's finish out his career, or I mean. Um, j- Whatever the case may be, uh, down here in Miami, hey, 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 beef up that defensive line, that'd be awesome. And I know Calais Campbell still has something left uh, to provide. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you know, it's it's not like you're looking for starters uh, reps from him. He would be a kind of a, a plug in guy, a veteran who's who's uh, who's going to be in there uh, getting some snaps for you. Uh, by the way, uh, Zenman uh, one. 1001 uh welcome and i've got you as a uh as a question that i'll answer tomorrow and uh let's see did i say peter mcdowell peter i've got one of your questions on here that uh, that i will answer on the online article tomorrow um Ferone is wrapping up here as as we talk again about um what how did the dolphins finish so that it's a successful off season um what are you what are you thinking as far as planning for the future? We talked we we mentioned we touched on Teron Armstead. Are are you planning for the future at Edge Rusher because of because of uh, Jalen Phillips? Are you planning for the future at safety? Jordan Boyer's a one year deal, right? And then Javon Holland has to be re signed. This offseason, are you looking ahead very much? You know me, I'm all in for this year, but when you've got that situation, especially at safety with Poirier and Holland, you you kind of, you know, Elijah Campbell is back, but don't you kind of have to look ahead? So are you are you doing that as part of a successful 2024 offseason? Yeah, I mean, well, you're always looking to add yeah. young talent. Now, the right. Dolphins did not, in large part, the past two drafts outside of Achan, and you know, hopefully Cam Smith uh, can can develop yeah. now yes. in a new system. So that would be huge. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's an all in right now approach. Everything is about 2024 right now because you have a max opportunity to win. But yeah, you're always looking to the future as well. So uh, that's why they're stacking 25 compensatory picks and and whatnot. So. Uh, th- yeah, there's definitely an eye on the future as, as well, as there always has to be. Yeah, uh, Polly King 305, as we uh, get out of here, says, what do y'all think of a cheaper option off the edge with a Tyus Bowser or Randy Gregory as rotation pieces? Um, I, I'll, I'll go first if, if you even want to touch this, Peronas. I think Shaq Barrett is already part of your cheaper option off the edge because he's an older guy. You're going to count on some some fairly significant uh, snaps from from Shaq Barrett. So to me, you've already taken that route. Uh, you need to go higher now if if you if if you're gonna you know do something off the edge. That's why I would say a first or second round pick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think the the roster will add another edge rusher. 
just especially after you just saw that you lost your two starters and then even Andrew Van Ginkle to, to right, injury, right, right. Uh, even then Cameron Good on top of that, yep. you, you lost yep. by the yep. end of the season where you had to piece it together with um, all these good quality names for their careers. But it, it would have been great if you had them all together in 2015 or something uh, as opposed yeah. to uh, 2023, uh, everyone who was playing by uh, in that playoff game against the Chiefs. So uh, I think definitely after seeing what happened last year, sort of similar to cornerback the year before, and how they made sure they, they brought in Ramsey. They still drafted highly in Cam Smith. Yeah. They brought in Eli Apple once Ramsey got hurt, and they were adding other names to compete in training camp. Uh, I think similar to that, and they'll treat edge rusher that way. Like, you just can't have enough bodies at that position. Yeah, yeah. Okay, real quick. I said we were getting out of here. Um, Tim Trini look, is look, rushing. I got the, the NCAA tournament to watch. <laughs> oh, I know. Michigan I know. State, Mississippi State. I know. You're- Right, we are. We are, we are exactly, I know I'm going into tournaments. I, I got North Carolina winning, by the way. I got Texas A&M in my final four. I, you know, I feel okay, that. I, 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 I think that. I picked Purdue. So sometimes, like that team that gets knocked out early one year, like Virginia did, and then then they go on and win the, the title the next year. So I'm just picking Purdue. All right, all right, Zach Eady, baby, I like it. I yeah. like it. All right, all right, Tim Trini. Uh, is the roster today tougher than last year's roster? We need to be tougher. It's getting there. It's moving in that direction. You have any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, and you wrote about it uh, for yeah. sure. A lot of these guys take that mindset. Uh, Jordan Brooks is tough. Uh, yes. you know, yes. you know, you know, Aaron Brewer might be more known for his agility at center, but, uh, yeah, I mean, him too uh, as a lineman. So uh, Anthony Walker, we just talked to him. Uh, I, I like his mindset uh, yeah. coming in. He, he had a nice quote that I highlighted in the uh, the article uh, tweet. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I a lot of these guys, definitely, uh, that's that's part of the mindset. Anthony Weaver, I think, will instill yep. that in this defense. Yep. Um, okay, finally, Billy Batson. We have to participate in an AFC conference game before going into win-now mode. I'll say this about that. I generally think you're right that you climb the stairs, but we saw what Tampa did. We saw what St. Louis did, right, um, recently, or, or, or St. Louis, the Rams, adding Matt Stafford, Los Angeles, <laughs> St. Louis. I'm living in the past, sorry. Uh, but, but you can, you know, Cincinnati pretty much did that with Joe Burrow, didn't they? You, you, but there are teams, you don't have to climb the ladder like Buffalo is, is, is doing. You can go from zero to 60. That's what okay. the Dolphins are trying to do. I, I hear you, but they don't have time to climb the stairs. That was that was two years ago and last year. Now you just have to jump up through the top step. Yeah, that, that's Billy Bats. What was his name? What? Billy Batson. Oh, Batson. Okay, because Billy Bats, I thought he got whacked in, in Goodfellas. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was in the trunk of the car. Nice. Well, what's he doing on, on, on our chat? <laughs> Fra- Frank Vincent's character. <laughs> <laughs> very nice very nice recall there I, I thought about that too all right man that's it um thanks for everybody for for tuning in today on a, on a thursday uh go watch some ncaa basketball good luck on your brackets me and Ferronas will be back in probably about three weeks with a lot of pre-draft information for you thanks for tuning in dolphins deep dive with perk sunsentinel.com